Hi, I'm Danielle Scruggs, the dog guru for the dog fed. Unfortunately, we're not going to have a live this week, as you can obviously tell for the preempt that we did for this particular video. But what we have is something that is so important to so many people in this world. And this week is National Appreciation Week for veterans and their pets. And we have decided to do an interview with a veteran himself and have a little backstory on dogs that actually help veterans, not only service dogs like what Michael Osborne has, but actual pet dogs. It is one of those things that I think that is really discounted in our today's society that unfortunately our veterans struggle exponentially hard with the transfer from being overseas and in combat coming home and we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide and it is our process with the program that we work and also the one that he is involved with to actually give an avenue to these veterans that unfortunately have to wait sometimes for years to get good mental health services which we'll talk about a little bit as well throughout the course of this and what we can do as um, not only a veteran but maybe a caregiver like Jamie is uh, for her husband as well during the process of finding avenues for these veterans that maybe don't involve drugs, that maybe don't involve extensive therapy, but can be a really quick band-aid for something and give process to something that opens up the life for the veteran once they come back and they're dealing with a lot of different stuff. Um, so who I have as my guest today is Michael Osborne, who is an Army veteran and his wife, Jamie Osborne. And we have worked the process together. Uh, we were service dogs together as well. And I know this is a passion for myself. It's also a passion for his family is to get dogs in the hands of veterans who really, truly need these dogs to counterbalance some of the issues that they're having coming home. And I know in today's society, with all the crazy we've got going on in the world, we have, you know, institutions that will do service dogs for these guys. But unfortunately, I know it's been my take throughout the course of years, and a lot of the veterans are waiting sometimes years for these dogs. Mm -hmm. And the process is, I'm sure that you can tell uh, from your own experience, is not a quick, easy process to train a service dog. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Absolutely not. It's not. It is not. It is a family-involved business, truthfully, and it's constant 24-7 work on the dog and yourself. And But, you know, a lot of veterans either, number one, don't have access to the quality dog, like the dog that you receive, or um, have access to dogs that have quality to become service working dogs. There's a lot of difference between, let's say, a therapy dog or an EAS, which is an emotional support dog, versus an actual service dog. You know, EAS dogs are not allowed in public areas, and sometimes, to be honest with you, and you can you know, chime in here by all reasonable aspects, sometimes the veterans aren't good with service dogs because it does take a lot of focus in, off of what they feel like they need to be watching out in public and puts it back on the dog. And sometimes that's a good thing, but sometimes that's a bad thing. Would I be correct in saying that? Absolutely. Yes. It's true. That makes sense. So we're going to talk just for a few minutes about um, what Michael has had going on in his life. Um, actually, a program that he has that is a fantastic program for veterans as well, uh, as well as having dogs that are not necessarily service dogs, but dogs that are aiding to these veterans and how they can acquire them and what they what a dog did for you that's actually not this service dog but another dog Absolutely. that had no service training <laughs> at all and how much she impacted your lives and made a difference for you and i'd love for you to tell that story so i'm going to turn it over for just a few minutes but this is michael osborne he, he's going to tell you a little bit about himself and this is jamie who is his wife and caregiver so i'm going to turn it over to you michael and just kind of tell us about your story if that makes sense so i'm sergeant michael osborne i got out in 2008 I served uh, Afghan Afghanistan from 04 to 05. Um, after being discharged, I didn't really know what was going on with my life. Uh, wasn't in a real good mental state. Uh, after getting hooked up with the VA, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder um, that has a laundry list of symptoms that go along with it. So depression, anxiety, hypervigilance, uh, the list just continues to go on. So how is how is living life with somebody who came back with that truthfully? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I always, guess we all have a good laugh on that one, right, Jamie? Laugh at it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, it's different struggles day to day. To be honest, um, it it wasn't just um, you come home and you get all the services that you need. Um, a lot of times you have to go find those services. And that's a lot of things that Michael was aware of and 
knew about somewhat, I would say, um, where to go. And he's even, you know, guided friends that's come home after him in that direction as well. But it's, again, not an easy process. It's something that even just getting the service help before any other any other care. So the programs that you that you are entitled to as a veteran sometimes are ones that you have to go and find. Right. Absolutely. And there's ones there you have to be a forward momentum for your own mental health. Am Absolutely. I, am I correct in Absolutely. Saying that? Being able to navigate the system is one of the hardest things in the world. That would probably be pretty frustrating. And I would imagine that if you aren't going searching the services, those services are not coming to find you. Am I correct? You are 100% correct. There's a running joke in the military, hurry up and wait. Hurry up and um, wait. <laughs> that, that never ends. Um, yes. Hurry up and yeah. wait. And I think with the, the service dogs in my program, the buddy dogs, we're trying to help eliminate that hurry up and wait. That makes total sense. So we're talking about EAS dogs versus service dogs versus just your family pet dog. Mm -hmm. So I know you have a very had a very special dog that kind of accidentally fell into your lap, and I'd Literally. like to hear the story on it. And how did the dog come about? First of all, I have a friend Brian that is very involved with local animal shelters. Um, one thing that he does is take the dogs that that don't thrive in an animal shelter, or that's not where their end result or home is going to mm -hmm. be. He will angel home these dogs. Uh, so. She was there temporarily. She, she was at Brian's house temporarily. Wow. So I went over one day just to hang out with Brian. He met me at the door. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm fostering a dog. She's extremely skittish. She come from a home that had a background of abuse. If you ignore her, she's going to ignore you. Cool, no problem. So went in, sit down on the couch. Me and Brian had talked for maybe three minutes. And Izzy made a beeline for me and laid her head in my lap. Shut up. Wow. So we had our moment, and Brian was like, dude, I don't know what what's going on. And I'm like, I don't know. It's a dog. <laughs> the dog won't leave me alone. Get your dog off of me, dude. No, absolutely <laughs> no. not. There was no, no get your dog I off of me. I love that. I love that. And that. it was a five-minute call later. Yeah, literally five minutes later, I picked, took my phone out, called Jamie, and said, hey, we've got a new dog. And how did that go down with you? Because you have... Girls in the house, so you've got teenagers. You've got three girls. You've got all the stuff you got going on. You've got had Michael. And we had one dog. At you the already time. have a dog. Oh, so that's you don't even know if this, these two dogs are going to get along with each other. Had no, no. Wow. Did not. Wow. So, what was your first reaction? I would have been like, uh, My no, first thank reaction you. was, I we have a very busy, hectic schedule with children and appointments and activities. Not to mention all the hectic, all the crazy that Michael's attention. bringing to the table. <laughs> so I yeah. mean, obviously we we stay on the go all the time. But when um, I saw the connection, and I was trying to explain to Danielle earlier, you, you can't describe it. It is a hundred percent true, genuine connection. When Michael and this, when I saw. Izzy and Michael together, it was love at first sight. It's the purest form of the, love. Yes, the purest love. love. The, the most amazing thing that I've always said about dog is they are so unconditional. Doesn't matter if you're fat, old, skinny, PTSD, black, white, rich, poor, purple polka dotted. Dog loves you for who you are, the true inner being of you. Mm -hmm. And they have no judgment. They have no forthright malice to go to, towards your past, and they don't go, well, you know what, today, but remember last week when you didn't take the trash out, Michael, you know, that yeah. we're really working on this with you, but we're trying to get along with you. Very true. You know, dogs don't have, they they live in the present. They don't live in the past. And yes. so now I really, because for me, I, as a storyteller, I want you to convey what is he meant to you? Where you were mentally and where, you know what? It, it, it is what it is. I can take you through the life of Izzy. Um, so that was, that was our initial bond was just immediate. And from that phone call to doing the paperwork with, I mean, the Humane mm -hmm. Society and all that, I think it took about three days before she came home. And once she came home, she got along with the kids. She got along with the Yorkie that was already there. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Good little Jake. <laughs> Poor Jake. Yeah. But He's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. They were actually best friends. Yeah, I mean, they were. This, this dog 
just completely yeah. fell into our family. This was a yes. It, it was. This it, was a yes. It absolutely was a yes. This was an absolute yes. Um, but that was she was my partner in crime from from day one. I mean, hiking trips, family trips, every. I mean, she was everything that a service dog is trained to be. Minus, without being trained. Without being trained, but <laughs> minus the public access. Um, I never needed that aspect of. So coverage. tell me about the points with Izzy when when you're having a really rough day and you're coming in. Tell me what that dog, because gosh knows, being a wife is hard enough. Being a wife of a veteran and especially a combat veteran that comes back with PTSD, that's huge, girlfriend. Like, I, I would have killed him. Like, let's just put it that way. I would have killed him. I, love you, mean it, got to suffocate you. That being said, there are things that I guess you, you know, you either are on your edge because you got kids going on in the house. You can't deal with some of the stuff he's got going on in his head because you've got too much of your own stuff going on. And you're really the rock solid part of this family. I mean, seriously, Jamie, you're the glue that's holding everything together at this point because he's really in a tentative place. You've got kids that are growing up that you have to keep mentally stable as well. And now you've invited this new dog into the house. So, But you know what? Evie was the kind of special that I could couldn't even tell you. I knew before he knew. Really? I knew that when he gets upset, she comes to his side. I knew when he was having a bad day and he just needed somebody to lay with. Wait, I'm going to get emotional. She was the one that was there. Everything, every time, he needed just the touch, the feel. I'm not... <laughs> And he'll tell you I'm not a very touchy feely person. Uh, when I go to bed, I want to go to bed. That was that was her place. Her place was right beside him. She loved him. She held him. She was there for him. Any moments of frustration, anger, anxiety, she was there. And, and this was just a mutt out of the kill shelter. That's wow. It. Wow. From, so, a, from an abusive home. From an abusive home. We... We could not, we found out when we had first started, the only problem that we had is that we believe she was abused before because Michael, um, like, he liked to eat house and, cam camouflage. and she could not see him in camouflage or she would kill him to it. Yep. That was the How only bizarre. issue we had the whole time that we had her. And after, it took about six months for her to get used to... Me and me being in camouflage. I could walk through the house in anything else and there's no issue. You go in the bedroom and change into camouflage and walk through the house and she'd be on the floor. Oh, wow. Wow. But so, she me, learned that over time that you it, know, was okay. it was okay. It was okay. So I guess in, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like there was a twofold process, actually a threefold process happening here. Number one, you saved a dog's life. You truthfully did. You saved a dog that probably wouldn't have had a chance in, in a shelter in any way, shape, or form because she's so, so shut down. Mm -hmm. um, so you gave this dog a second chance, which is truthfully a gift. It truthfully is. Um, that being said, am, am I overreaching or overstepping my bounds if I would say that this dog is he actually saved your life on occasion? Multiple occasions. Multiple occasions. She not only saved my life, but probably saved our marriage multiple times. Wow. Wow. That is so impactful. That is absolutely impactful to say. I personally know the two of you, and I love you both to pieces. I think you are amazing. I am just, I am honored to be a part of your journey in any way, shape, or form. Because, and, and I, again, thank you from myself and all of our viewers, again, for the service that you performed for us. That I didn't have to send my son, you went instead. Or my husband, you went in a little. My son or my husband, thank you. That being said, he couldn't have done that without you doing what you do for him now. Does that make sense? I mean, because if not, all that time, energy, and money, and, and just strength that he put out into the universe for all of us would have been for naught if he would have come back and killed himself. And that's the truth. Um, because we don't want to lose anybody. And I think that with a program that you and I have talked about over the course of the years and we've worked through as well, Getting dogs not only out of shelters or um, getting just a pet dog, regardless of where you get it from. Um, I always encourage shelter adoption. Um, I myself am a breeder trainer. And so breed-specific dogs have a purpose. They truthfully do. 
Uh, but there's so many dogs out there that need homes. And I think of, you know, we watch these ASPCA commercials and these Sarah McLaughlin commercials and everybody brings to tears. <laughs> but what we don't see is that, that little dog that's shaking in the corner that has the big eyes and scared to death and doesn't know what to do. That was Izzy, am I right Absolutely. by saying that? And so this little dog that was terrified of everything and had all these little idiosyncrasies that she developed throughout the course of her tragic lifetime before she got to you and won the lottery, by the way, um, <laughs> you know, actually was a game changer for you and, and your marriage and your family and going forward. And so for this National Pet Appreciation for Veterans Week, I guess what we want to do is we want to honor the fact, especially because your Izzy was so special, to me, this was a good way for you to honor her even today, because my hopes for, sorry about the cat, people, she is who she is. <laughs> Um, but if for one person that gets to watch this video and understands that your process, and I've worked with you a lot over the course of last year or so, um, and I know the damage that was done. I have seen it for my own firsthand account. I have We've seen it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've watched veterans that I've worked for with service dogs and, and I know the impact that these dogs have had on their lives. And I guess the process that I want to bring forward is that these programs it takes so long sometimes for veterans to come about the dog for service work and and i can i really would encourage you if you feel like you can go through the process and wait for some of these dogs go through it do it absolutely because you know it's now you have athena tell me a little bit about athena and what what happened because i know izzy really blazed the way for athena because you were not about doing a service dog before you got izzy right, right. at all you're I, like I was, no service dogs i'm good absolutely i was 100 percent against the idea of a service dog um, never entertained it at all. Uh, Izzy was everything that I needed. Um, but after we lost Izzy, there was a big void. Um, after, after that, I was contacted by a lady that I knew in Florida. And she, Mary. Mary, absolutely. <laughs> and, and Mary, you know Mary's personality. She, through, through a phone call, she said, uh, you're getting a service dog. And I said, no, Mary, I'm not. And she said, yes, you are. And I said, yes, Mary, okay. Uh, that, that's the way Mary works. We both know Mary. Yeah. But uh, through, through that process that ended up failing, me and you, we, we linked up and, come on. Oh, she knows that. She knows what's going on. She says, you got me tangled, Dad. Well, but even to backtrack a little bit on that, how we got Luna even between. Yeah, because there was another dog that came We rescued another dog. <laughs> that's right. Her. That's right. And um, we weren't sure she was going to work for us as as we needed yeah. for him. Yeah. So after rescuing her, we decided no, she wasn't going to work for his needs, but she was going to stay with us and she you know we knew we could have that life for her mm -hmm. but then since michael and athena have met and she basically you know grew up in our house with our kids ate your couch in the process ate, didn't yeah, you folks ate, 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 ate the couch. by the way it's yes it is a it is a carolina golden's born bread to date that couch and not be lying to you <laughs> <laughs> but you know what not a proud moment for us by the way Oh, Everything well, else that she does was totally worth it. The couch will be, you know, can be replaced. Yeah. It, it, that was a, a trainer, not a dog issue. Dog, <laughs> dog is dog. It was a person issue, not a dog issue. Absolutely. Shut up. No Absolutely. way. So, in the process of just the work that you've done with Athena, the work you did with Izzy, tell me about, do you take time, like, do you specify time that you're training? Do you specify... Because you know that you need that mental health break. Absolutely. Um, and, and tell me about how that works for you. That's my evening. That's Jamie's rest period. That, that's probably the best. Sure you can. I don't care if you have a hundred dollars. You stay out from under me. <laughs> well, the evenings when you know life has started to slow down and the kids are going to bed mm -hmm. and you know dinner's done and Jamie's able to take a break from daily life is usually when me and Athena are able to get our best training in. Uh, that's when our our one on one happens, and most of the time it's on the back porch, just 
my house is surrounded by woods and I listen to the crickets and the frogs and it's the best distraction training that you can possibly get for her, but it's my daily distraction of what I deal with. Is that something that you kind of look forward to throughout the course of the day to give you that decompression? Absolutely. Because I know with myself, and gosh knows I've not been to Afghanistan and done what you've <laughs> done, but I can tell you my life's pretty crazy. <laughs> And so I know that the dog, like just this moment with her, with Nevaeh, who is, there is no service aspect at all to my chihuahua, but the comfort of knowing the dog's in my lap, the feel of the dog's hair, and what it does for me, set serotonin uh, loose in my body, endorphins that actually do calm me, that does give me that kind of <sighs> moment. Um, tell me, is there, do you have a, a specific moment where you're like, okay, this happened, and that dog just was, it was, that was my first thought. The dog was already there. Does that make sense? That whether it be Athena, whether it be Izzy, but you just come home and you're just like, I got to explode. I need something. And this dog was just there. And that was that moment that you went, it was like the aha moment of this is the, this is, you know, kismet. It is the perfect serendipitous relationship. I've had it with both dogs. Um, hers was in Walmart was uh, we were training in Walmart. Hey, and Walmart traumatizes me as well. <laughs> absolutely, it's the worst place in the world. <laughs> but, you know, prior to starting the video, I asked you about, you know, that that was, that's my thing, is a tactile distraction of my own that I've developed mm -hmm. over the years. And that's what she was initially trained on. That was her, mm -hmm. her target. Um, and we, we were training public access. We weren't, we were not training alert. Um, so I'm standing in line getting ready to check out and for whatever reason it was, I was in a situation that was uncomfortable and I, apparently I was doing it. Had no clue that I was doing it, but she knew that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, she did exactly what she was trained to do. She distracted, it was a nudge and yeah. I didn't, it was stop. Yeah. And she didn't stop. It was a See? nudge and it was stop, okay, stop. <laughs> Quit. And, they, and we're trying to check out here. It's bad enough but exactly. without you going off the rails. And, and there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to check out until I recognized what she was doing. She knew that she was doing her job. Mm -hmm. And we, that was, all right, you've got it. You got that. It's just a little bit of support that you need just to take that edge off to get you through that moment. Absolutely. That makes sense. That makes absolutely. sense. And that's the purpose of Service Dog for a lot of our veterans is to actually cause a distraction, to interrupt the train of thinking that they're going at. And the longer you spend with the dog, the more they are able to read you. And that's the same, it's the truth with pet dogs as well. Um, I have um, a lot of pets. <laughs> I have a lot of pets. <laughs> I have more pets than most people. <laughs> it's my babies. But I know that they seem to be able, dogs have an innate sense of being able to read people where people do not read people well. Uh, you know, you may come in angry, but that's not your hard emotion your hard emotion is i want to lay down somewhere and just cry yeah. and the dog can push through the anger and get to that soul spot and just give your heart a rest yeah. and would you not oh you're 100 percent correct so let's back up to 2015 um that was when we had izzy and so let's just go through the whole story why not? let's do it let's do it so i take my kids to school Drop them off, come home to cut grass, and my lawnmower battery was dead. Went to my building that has all my tools in it and rolled up the door and everything was everywhere. I first thought was I had gotten robbed. I wow. said, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So I take two steps into my building, I look under some shelves, and there's a guy laying there. And oh, no. He, and he charges me. We roll in the backyard. Um, he gets up, takes off running, and the soldier in me. Well, said, I'm going to chase that man down and I'm going to put a hurt down on him. And, I'll bet. Right? Fight. You're exactly right. Fight, fight, fight. And so, uh, 150 yards up the road, we're in a ditch doing our business, and he pulls out a six inch knife and stabs me twice. Wow, this man stabbed you mm -hmm. in your own yard. Like, you went all the way through Afghanistan, took bullet rounds whizzing by your head only to come back home and get stabbed by somebody who was breaking in your building. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. So That's unbelievable. That was a whole nother level of crazy for our family. I bet so. So Because I bet that triggered a whole bunch of mess with you, didn't it? It did. And I I bottled it. 
and compressed it, and I was the most calm person you will ever meet. It was it was eerie how calm I was. The calm before the storm. No, and the storm was, was before the calm because a <laughs> lot of the anger, and you this is totally backwards, but all the anger he had built up, the frustration he had had, he had this aha moment. So what she's talking about, I was, I was, I was not a very nice person. I was very it, angry. It, I was a very angry individual prior to that. Um, you had a lot of emotion that you had to deal, or you you couldn't deal with. You didn't have an outlet to deal with it. All, but imagine. Well, it, it was just me. It was my whole persona, and a lot of veterans are angry, and they don't know why. Uh, you couldn't express I, it. And it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but after getting stabbed, I was eerily calm for a month, month and a half. Quiet. Quiet, just trying to figure out life, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But once I was able to get up and start moving and uh, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was we, we had a room sectioned off and had a baby gate and I was trying to step over the baby gate and the baby gate fell and I ended up falling and I got up and lost my cool and stomped this baby gate into a little itty bitty pieces. You killed the baby I gate. I killed the baby gate. But wow. In the process, I scared Izzy. And Izzy peed on the floor. And when Izzy peed on the floor, I broke. I'm not going to get emotional, Danielle. You are going to get emotional. <laughs> when Izzy peed in the floor, I broke. Yeah. Um, and all Because that was the one friend that had not let you down, and all of a sudden you let her down. Exactly. And so I sit in the floor like a two-year-old with her laying in my lap and sob for a good 30 minutes. You know, I've always looked at that as an emotional vomit. That, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. That is exactly it is, what it, it was. I think that when you handle a stressful situation and God knows, like a rack wasn't enough, mm -hmm. you get to come home and get stabbed by just some dude who wants your wand on for Christ's sake. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't emotionally vomit. And I'm surprised you took a month to do it, to be honest with you. And that dog actually helped that process with you, didn't it did. she? It did. That was the catalyst that brought all of it out was I had scared something that I loved unconditionally. And from that emotional vomit forward, I was a completely different individual. Wow. Wow. Still am. See, you know, I, I cannot stress this enough. The gift that mankind has been given through the avenue of dog is something that mankind will never be able to repay. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, we have been gifted with a creature unlike any other creature on the planet that wants to interact with us, that wants to read us, be with us, um, basically be a sounding board or an emotional pillow for vomits and, and whatever seems to happen or thrown at us with life. I mean, just if you are somebody who is not dealt with the military aspect of it, owning a dog is one of the most emotionally satisfying things that you'll ever do as a human being. Um, you will never be able to repay that debt. And and I always look at it from that avenue. I've always felt that, felt that I was... Um, I was kind of messed with somebody because I took the good dog off the market and made him my good dog. <laughs> and I thought, surely there's somebody out here that could have used this dog more than me, but I need him more, you know, or I need her more. So, uh, you know, I cannot encourage each and every one of you. The process I know for some veterans is very tedious with getting service dogs. That being said, here's an avenue that maybe you've not thought about, and that is actually going to the shelter, adopting a dog putting that dog forward. There is so much you can do with that dog. You can use that dog as a therapy dog for other situations. You want to go and visit, you want to do things, you can go and get uh, therapy certifications that you can do with the dog. And heck, if you're not even to that point, just the fact of having that dog, having a sounding board, because I think that one of the things that I've heard time and time again from veterans that I've worked with is this is an Something that I can connect with that does not judge me no matter how off the rails I can get. Exactly. And, you know, I think that that emotional connection is sometimes something that people can't give. I mean, I know personally as a wife, as a mother, uh, 
as a friend, I can take so much and then I have to check out because I'm like, okay, I'm emotionally full myself mm -hmm. of not only my own baggage, but now I'm carrying your baggage too and I'm overwhelmed and maybe I'm not going to be a good emotional help to you, but a dog does not have an emotional t full, right. never. I mean, that's the, the amazing thing about dog is that they continue to take and take and take and take all of that that we are trying to push off. And if we just give them the love and satisfaction of being there with them and being present with them, that dog will give us a gift back that is unpayable, absolutely unpayable. Mm -hmm. You can't repay that gift for anything. And um, so through the course of this, you know, we really pray and hope that you will find what it is that you're looking for. If you know a veteran, there are so many programs out there for great service dogs, but you know, we're not here talking about service dogs. We're talking about just your family pet and what your family pet can do for you. I know there's a program that you are starting that you're working on and you have been really diligent. I know you put out a service dog already with your program. Um, and tell me a little bit about the program that you're going through. And maybe if there's somebody out there watching that goes, hey, I'd really like to either fund a program or I'd like to be part of a program or I'd even just like to start my own program because you can hit where you can hit. You can't hit everywhere. Exactly. So there are people out there that I know have the ability to go out and find these dogs, um, research these dogs, go to, you and I have been to animal shelters together where we evaluate dogs for prospect dogs, nice. for people. Yes, <laughs> nice. we went to an animal shelter and we won the lottery. That's yes, what I did. said. Um, they brought us out three, two dogs, two dogs, two dogs and um, the first dog was just, Oh my God, who put that dog in an animal shelter is yeah. an idiot. It's all I got to say. I mean, he was, he is now a service dog for a veteran that, that month. you facilitated through Mary. Uh, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he was a benefactor for that dog, um, which is just an amazing gift in, in itself. But I tell me a little bit about the program that you're doing today. So what we're doing, it's, we've coined it Buddy Dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. It's basically everything that we've just talked about. So what we're trying to do is take the guys that's been on these waiting lists for years, waiting on a service dog, and it may still be three, four, five years before they're going to get a service dog if they ever get that dog. That, that, yeah. yeah, even if they their application ever gets accepted. Mm -hmm. And taking these, dog, these, these vets and placing them with a dog that we've already vetted. So we know that the dog is emotionally stable. We know that it doesn't have food aggression. Uh, it's, it's, all the bases are, are they're covered. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna, we already know that it's gonna be a really good house dog for you. No, it doesn't necessarily come with training. Um, it's, it's. That's kind of the process though, isn't it? Is it for is. the vet to vest himself into the dog to That's actually the get the emotional the emotional needs that he needs. Absolutely. Uh, I guess yeah. the best one that uh, we we placed one three months ago, um, a local vet in the main scenery. I stumbled upon this dog by pure accident, a lot like we did Max. <laughs> uh, I had been looking for the right dog for him. He's a very active guy. Uh, he was a Cav Scout in the military. Wow. Big, big, burly individual. And he just never slows down. So I needed a dog that never slowed down. Never slowed down. He could keep up. <laughs> yeah. And I, I looked at multiple dogs and none of them just fit the, the need perfect. Mm -hmm. I got on Facebook one night and there was a guy that had posted a black lab that they had got for his autistic son. And, but they were having to get rid of the dog because it was taking up too much time from their son's life. And so I reached out to him. Henry didn't know. I had reached out to this guy and said, Hey, you know, this is what I've got going on with Patriot Sports and my organization. Um, told him about the Buddy Dog program. He's like, you know, I think that's great what y'all are doing. You know, do you want to set up a, a meet and greet or what? I said, I really would like to come out and do an assessment on the dog first. That's one of the most important things that me and you mm -hmm. talked about is, you know, betting the dog for the veteran. Absolutely. Um, we don't want to place any kind of undue or added stress yeah. on a stressed out individual. That's the worst thing that you can do. Yes. Thanks, Danielle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, Try please. <laughs> yeah. But that's my husband. Uh, we, I, I went out, I met the dog. Um, the dog was like, some, for some reason, these dogs just fall on our lap. That tends to be perfect. He was another max. And so, talked to the guy, found out that the dog's name is Scout. 
that's going to a calf scalp. Shut up. True story. And so the the dog turned out to be perfect. Well, in my eyes, perfect. Put him through the paces. Um, contacted Henry that night. Said, "Hey man, I think I've got the right dog for you." So we went back up the next day. Him and Henry hit it off just like that. Wow. Um, went through the the proper paperwork. Went through the vet. Made sure that all the dogs. Uh, Checkups have been done. Uh, the dog, all all the vaccinations, everything was right, and Henry is smitten with Scout. They're a team now. They are a team. They are a team. They're, they're a team. Everywhere, everywhere that Henry goes, Scout goes, and that is that's the buddy dog. That's nice, it. nice. Um, with him being one of my local vets or our mm -hmm. local vets, uh, he has the opportunity if he wants to go and continue that training into a service dog. I'm more than willing to help him out. Nice. Um, but nice. it's going to be, he, he's the one that's invested in that dog. He's yeah. the one that's putting the training in. That's so true. I think that a lot of the service dog programs sometimes fail uh, for lack of understanding what the vet has gone through and being able to pair with a great dog. Absolutely. And that, you and I both know that that is a talent that you build over time, and it is a gift um, a lot of times. But there are so many times I've walked into shelters or rescues and see a really good dog that wouldn't make a good service dog. Mm -hmm. um, I think of uh, Karen Eason and her husband, Joe Eason. I found a dog in a humane society that was an amazing fit for not a service dog program, but for something of that nature that could really integrate into the family and work well. And she drove all the way up from Florida to get this dog. And I just... Every time she posts pictures of him, he's not a service dog. You know, her husband, unfortunately, is passing away of ALS. And I know that that dog is going to bring a lot of comfort to her throughout the course of that. He was a, a veteran as well. So, you know, she, her family struggled. They lost a son as well who was murdered. And just through all that trauma and stress, this dog, I know, has been just an amazing gift to their family as well. Um, you know, I, I cannot tell you enough that just because you were in a situation that you think that you don't have the answers for, there are people out there that will help you. Um, I know that your program reaches out to so many people. I know Mary's program is absolutely foundational. She's helped thousands of veterans, I'm sure, at this point with her program as well. And research, go out, look, see people that, that know how to evaluate dogs to take with you to find a good buddy dog or a good program dog that you could maybe turn into a service dog at some point in time with the right training and the right help to do so. But the process is long and arduous with the uh, with a service dog. But I know that the buddy dogs really do amazing work without the accolades of being a service dog. You know, we love our service dogs, but Absolutely. the truth of it is, is that if it wasn't for Izzy being the dog that she was, you would not be sitting here today mm -hmm. with the stories that you have to tell. And you may not even be sitting here today. Exactly. You may not be here today, and you definitely would probably not be married today because <laughs> of all the stuff that had gone on. <laughs> And if you can say one thing, that the legacy that Izzy left, a pet dog mm -hmm. that you got out of an animal shelter really kept your family together. And I think that that is a beautiful, amazing, wonderful story that is a tribute to all the vets that I know that you have worked with, um, that I know personally, that I have seen over the course. I have a dear friend whose name is Bill Philipsick. Uh, I've known him since I was 15 years old, and he has got such a heart for animals, and I see his face when he's with dogs, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, he's got an underlying, a, a latent, latent anger, just like the rest of us in the world right now, but it, the minute I see him with his dog, the face softens, he gets down on the floor, and he has a good time, he came up here and played with a litter of puppies of ours with, for two weeks, I think his <laughs> wife thinks she let, he left her, but he was just like, I need to get my soul right, so let's move on, you know. Um, I cannot tell you enough.